Welcome everyone, my name is Paula Phillips, also known as General Artista, and I'm going to use the jelly plate for the first time with some golden open acrylics. I bought the starter, like a starter trial set here. This one happens to be um, the modern color set, which has Hansa, yellow opaque, pyro red, quinacridone magenta, phthalo blue green shade, phthalo green blue shade, and titanium white. So there might be a different one that had different colors. I, I can't remember. But I thought, oh, I'd like the bright set. So basic, you know, yellow, red, pink, whatever. Got the 8x10 jelly plate from Jelly Arts. And uh, so I did go to the Jelly Arts YouTube because golden open acrylics are not cheap, right? These are artist-grade acrylics. And they have a very um, long dry time. So you have lots of time to work with them uh, before they dry out. So which is especially good for mono printing, which is why I bought them so long ago. So, um, so I got so I wanted to watch a video to, you know, at least have a, a few tips and tricks before I just went nuts and wasted a whole bunch of expensive paint because these are only the little tiny starter things. So uh, I did go to the Jelly Arts. That's their YouTube channel. And, um, oh man, I forget which one I watched. It's something like painting and layers or something like that. And it's, it's a different type than we normally do with the, put the paint down stencils and whatever. I'm going to paint in layers. So I'll do one, uh, onto this jelly plate with a brush, you know, and then we'll pull a print, multiple prints. We'll build up layers, <laughs> uh, one by one on one sheet of, of paper, if that makes any sense. So some of the tools they used, um, well, mostly they use Q-tips, uh, brayer, of course. I also have uh, some of my catalyst wedges and the tinier wedges and the catalyst brushes, which Eileen and some of you guys call fly swatters. And um, and I'm just getting some regular a regular paint brush. I'm just going to use a no, well, maybe not that one, but I'm just going to use a regular paint brush. Um, also important because these are open acrylics. Normally, I would, I would work. You know, I always put my paint uh, on a palette, not on a palette, but on my nonstick craft sheet. But today, I thought I'd get a cheap plastic plate from the dollar store uh, to use as my palette because I, you know, I have limited number of colors, so I want to. I'm gonna have to mix some of them too, right? Um, so I got that. Could use some palette paper if you if you want to use that as well, or. Whatever you coffee lid, what if that if you're DD, whatever you got going on. And I did talk to talk about that I have these tools. This is called a shafe sharf. That's just a funny name. S C H A R F F Wipeout Tool USA is what it says. And I'm pretty sure I bought it at Hobby Lobby when the when we went on the Buffalo Girls trip. But I actually have two of those for some reason, so maybe I'll have to gift one. They're the exact same, but one says sharp and one is blank. So I, I don't know how I or why I have two. Anyways, I think that's what we got going on. I've, I'm excited to do this because I've never really just tried to paint onto the jelly plate. Uh, you know, I've always brayered it down. I've never done anything but brayer it down. So so this will be uh this will be fun for me, and I hope you guys will like it. I'm just quick. I find a brush here. This is a bright, a bristle bright, but I don't know if I'm going to use that. I'm just going to get a couple of different ones. Different sizes. I guess my problem is I, I do really leave all my brushes in water and now I'm hurting. Oh, here's the one I wanted. Okay, so we're ready. I'm just going to put a little bit of an open acrylic onto my palette. Over here, we have a blue green shade. Now, these are artist grade heavy body paint. Well, am I being quiet? Oh, yeah, maybe everybody's intently watching <laughs> or already bored. Got some titanium white. And I don't know how much to put down, guys. I'm the type of person that always puts way too little paint. Um, then I have to go back, but it doesn't matter. It's going to be right in front of me. Pyro red, Hansa yellow. Put the 
right and roll close together like this. We have a green. I know some people were working along. I know Jane is working along. Shall be fun. I'm going to be painting. On the video, they did kind of like leaf oval leaf shapes. And, and you know, I like circles, so I'm going to paint some. I got to paint some circles. Quinacridone. I'm pretty good at saying quinacridone now. And probably, I, that maybe that's not even the right. <sighs> oh, you're scrambling. Do I need to back up, Jean? Do I need to wait a bit? I forget. Uh, before I bought the open acrylics, because uh, I subscribed to the, the Golden YouTube channel, um, when they first brought them out, I watched the video, but that was a long time ago. So now I don't really, uh, I don't really remember. Anyway, I'm going to put a little bit more quinacridone because I do like this magenta. I don't know if it tweeted. Can anyone tell me if it tweeted or not? I didn't actually. I don't know if it automatically did or not. All these new things. You may have to go to all these different places. I don't know if it auto shared. And if it already auto shared, I don't want to like go again. Hi, Dar. I don't want to put it on again and like bother everybody. So I think a lot of people knew I was when I was coming in. It did? Okay, thanks, Sherry. Thanks so much. So it's an auto-share. So that means I can't sneak on, you know, or anything. It's just going to automatically always pop out. There's got to be, there's got to be a setting. <laughs> in the mail, I mean, like actually in like the physical mail? Or in your email? Golden, that Golden is the company, is the, uh, Whoa. Right? Golden is an artist. I think it's a paint company. Paints and Prime. Oh, Eileen, I'm going to have to look that up, my friend. Okay, so I'm going to go into some quinacridone. I just like to say quinacridone. Oh, that's awesome. And I'm going to draw some, draw, paint, paint some circles right onto the plate. Now it helps if you have the open, um, glaze. so they have the glazing liquid in the open form as well. This is the regular and this, uh, they also have the open. So the way you can tell whether your goldens are open or not is the packaging quite easily, which is nice of them, they change their packaging, right? So this is your regular artist grade acrylic, and this is the open. So white for regular, and black is... So they did use... Um, they did use that medium. I'm going to dip my brush into water. Like I said, this is the first time I'm going to play around with it and see what happens. I think I can see why they need the fluid. I'm not sure if adding a, a touch of regular... No, I, I wouldn't... I guess I better not dare adding a touch of regular into it. Eh? <clears throat> Hi, Jen. Good to see you. Hi, Jen. Blends better. See, I don't have any uh, self-leveling gel. That's cool. Good to see you, Jen. Doing some awesome things. I, I noticed on Instagram. Now 
there's a piece of dry paint there. Piece of dry paint. I definitely needed some of the open. So this this may not go so well. Jane, do you have? Uh, are you? Do you have the? The. Uh, medium, open the open medium to go with it. It dries you fast. Uh oh, I'm gonna be in trouble then. Darn it! I guess watching the video didn't help me. <laughs> Oh no! Oh well, I'm not, um, you know, I'm not on at any particular time. Like I don't, my schedule, uh, other than Wednesday, I'm gonna start. What the devil? I don't know what happened there. So I'm just gonna. What they showed on the on the video was to put a black mark. To know which which way is up for when you go on to the next to the next one. So then they use the the guide. Yeah, I can already tell. It's not that it's drying on my palette here, but it's it's not easy to work with. Jen, when you said you do. When you wrote, well, it'll be a huge flop, that's for sure. Did you write you use the regular with the open? No, I don't know if I should try that. That would probably make it dry too fast. So I'm just putting a, using the other part as a guide. I'm mixing white and yellow and crack. I don't know what color I'm making. I'm making a salmon, I suppose. Orange. I didn't use any a lot to hmm. Guess it couldn't hurt. I mean if it's gonna dry, adding uh definitely use more white. Definitely I can feel that because the plate, you know, it's rubber, it's kinda sticky, I can feel the resistance. I can feel the resistance. So I'll add a a uh, dab or two next. So what then they then they used Q-tips to draw into that paint to wipe out parts. This works pretty good. Who needs a catalyst wedge if you just use Q-tips? Although I'm probably going to use a bunch of them. Where can I put the? Uh oh, where can I put the ones I already use? But I guess the fun thing about this is you can draw any shape, any texture I like I said I've had the jelly plate for a while and I guess it's been a year and a half but I just haven't used it well I haven't been doing any art it's not just uh, not on the jelly plate well yeah that's that's the thing right we'd all be doing different things if it wasn't on the jelly the jelly plate yeah, you, oh, you didn't see it. <laughs> so, lesson learned today already. I didn't have enough distinguished, like that color, the, you know, the orange I made, tangerine or whatever. I didn't have enough white, wasn't bright enough, but still not bad. That's another layer. Or, you know what I did, I probably didn't, maybe that's already drying. Hmm. Hmm. You know what I mean? Maybe that's already dry and won't come up because I don't have the open, the glazing liquid. No, no, it's not, a, it's not drying. I just, I probably just didn't let, oh, you know what? Another thing about the video is that they don't show if the papers get dry. They were, you know what I mean? They hand them off somewhere. Well, there's somebody, uh, I'll clean my brush here, go a different color. Is somebody drying them in between? Maybe that's what happened here. The paint, the first layer of paint wasn't dry enough. I, I don't know. I don't know if the first layer has to be dry. 
We're playing around, people. <clears throat> well, I promise when I do my show on Saturday night, everything I do, I will know what I'm talking about. There won't be any embossing <laughs> or jelly plating this way. It's something I've tried and done many times. All right. It adds a green and white, maybe. And then some more. More white. They do. They do. They make... Um, this was just the starter set, because I, I hadn't tried the opened. But they make every color... Oh, I, shouldn't, I, the, I retract that. I'm not sure every color. I'm not sure how many colors they make. But they make many colors. Uh, I don't know if they do their whole line. I'm sure they do. Why wouldn't they? But anyways, they have lots and lots of colors. Um, this is just too dry. Definitely need the... I'm going to I'm going to have to add we're going to try this acrylic glazing liquid the satin and just uh hope for the best. <laughs> yeah, so you don't have to mix colors if, you know, if you have some of the No, oh, that's better. You won't have to mix colors if you have some of the paint paints in already mixed. You know what I mean? Other colors. And if I like this process, I'm working on. And it doesn't have to be exact. I mean, that's what's going to be fun about this. You don't have to follow the exact uh, placement that you had before. I don't know. I'm just playing around. See what happens. Oh, that wasn't smart. That's going to make some brown. Okay. Now, let's go for something, a different texture. Uh, got my Catalyst Funny Rush here. So let's see what we're going to need. No, that's not going to work so well. I already know. I'm building up too much paint on my wedge. This is a tiny wedge. Hey, Jean. Hey, Cynthia. And then they took q-tips and just dotted them to get circles so I'll add some of those too well twisting that was my problem I didn't twist so I didn't get quite clear of an image but yeah twisting dot pressing twist Page. Anyone have any big Friday night plans? <laughs> hey, Darcy. I saw Darcy's wonderful, uh, what did you call it, Darcy? Friday night art party? A picture of her desk? That was pretty cool. I didn't have, I'll have to, well, I got my phone right here. I'll have to join the fun. Charlie. Oh, there's a cool layer. So I'm not, uh, I don't have the, the big one. When they did this video, they had the ginormous, you know, eight by 10. So I don't have, or sorry, they have the big 12 by 14 or four, whatever it is bigger than mine. <laughs> so obviously Bef when I'm done this paper, this this mono print, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna have to trim it down so that it's eight by ten or a little bit less than eight by ten, so they don't have so much. Uh... So this other off print, I'm gonna put that here, so then I can trim it down so I don't have that white border. Yeah, 
I don't have very much color mixing skills. <laughs> I just go with the flow, so. So we shall see. Okay, I think, let's see. Well, now it's time to add some blue. And I'm going to add a little bit of white. And I am going to be bad and add that glazing liquid again. They suggest to use the mediums. They have me acrylic mediums to go, open mediums to go with the open paints. And they suggest you use them, um, of course. But I didn't buy them. I just bought this little, I don't think I did. Maybe I did and I'm sitting here because I bought these a while ago, my friends. Over a year, maybe. I'm making it worse by looking right now. Oh, I won't bother. I'm pretty sure I didn't. Now I can't remember. Did I put some stuff in there already? <laughs> remember, guys, a Q and a colon doesn't work if you are talking to me or, or have a question or whatnot. Um, I can't remember if I put... No, I guess I didn't. I went looking for it. So use some capitals. As Jess says, it's just said yesterday I like to be yelled at. <laughs> okay. So I can look look at my print here. So that's to the left. This one's to the right. So over here I want to have some blue. You don't have to follow the whole circle either. Maybe I'll bring this one out. Add some blue there. Oh, it's so much better, guys, to use the the glaze the glazing medium. All right, that looks good. Although that's only four spots of blue. Maybe I have to add one right here. No meaning yet. Oh. Oh, I was gonna print without, but without that. See what happens when I start looking at the chat. That's why this is good practice for me. Well, this time let's let's wipe out with uh, with our sh sharp wipe out tool. Uh, what do we want to do? Definitely have to have a piece of something to. That's not wiping out very well, I'll tell you that. Maybe I'll go to the other side. Oh, that's better. I was using the oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was using the pointy side for some silly reason. So that's silly because I went the wrong way. Just have to make it random over here too. Dana. Welcome, Lane. Okay. That's my ool. And because I have the smaller plate, my plate's smaller than my paper, my placement's not exact. So if you want to have exact placement for your, you know, every layer, um, then I would suggest that trim your sheet down to the size of your jelly plate. What whether you have a six by six jelly or eight by ten or whatnot. That was kind of a cool layer. While that one's still going. So I can't see, I've got about you know half an inch or whatever it is on each side, so maybe three quarters or whatever on the other side, but so I can't tell exactly if I'm laying it down in the right position. When I watched uh, other mono printing video years ago, but it wasn't with a jelly, right? They were using the linoleum or not linoleum, 
Anyways, they're using something else. So they taped their paper, like, and they had a hinge so they could just go up and down, up, you know what I mean, rather than, but you can't really do that with the jelly plate because it's thick. Oh, right. I'm just thinking here for a second. See, now Jan is smart. <laughs> Jan says, that's why I love streaming too, especially when I'm trying something new. Well, anytime, because, you know, you always learn something new. Jan just said to put a piece, the same piece of paper you're using underneath the jelly plate, and then you can line that up. <laughs> Genius, thanks. Hey, Jeannie. Welcome, indirect. Okay, so I do have some. Well, that wasn't what I wanted to do. I have lots of paint on that brush. Bewitched. You guys are talking about witch movies. <clears throat> so let's see. I try to put a bright, bright yellow. I'm just going to dab some of this off so that when I put down this yellow, almost straight out of the tube, well, probably straight out of the tube here, maybe mix with some Kanaka. But, um, you know, I don't want it to mix with that last blue. I want to keep enough on the plate to see where, where I've been working. And so I just want to see, okay, where I want my my yellow or what I want I can, it can help me line it up it's going to be the mirror image of course but um, all right I need to have some more white I believe I guess I need a bigger palette eh Oh, and I wanted to add the yellow. Hopefully there's probably, I know there's a glare on this plate, but can't be helped right now, fortunately. Okay, so it's going to be the reverse image. So I had that blue over here. I need some yellow. Um, And that's a fun, I mean, it's a monoprint. You don't really ever know what you're, what you're going to get. Because that's going to go there. So this side, now I've got myself all confused. <laughs> I need some yellow over here. <gasps> I'm not sure who Barbara Gray is. Never heard that name. Okay, this could be a complete fail because I don't really, since I wiped back so much of that paint, I lost all my grooves, well, a lot of where, I should say grooves, <laughs> grooves, you know what I mean, guideline. Clarity stamp. Oh, that sounds familiar. Yeah, see, here's the thing. I'm liking where this is going, don't get me wrong. But I think when they did that video, they have someone over on the other side, or maybe between every lay. I don't know. They have to be having somebody dry it because it's re that blue from here. Unless it's, you know, I, I, I know I, oh, and I didn't even draw into that yellow. Oh, well, 
<laughs> wasn't paying attention. But anyways, that blue is still wet on the pages, and now, so it retransferred back off. Hmm. Yeah, sometimes I get all confused. That's why I keep the same name. If I'm on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, you know who I am because I get all confused when people change their names and have different names on different platforms or whatever. At least the first time you come that you come in. All right. So that was a lot. Let's go we go try to see if we can go back to some of this green. So, I keep having to try to visualize where this is going in my <laughs> I'm not so good at looking backwards or upside down. No, this would be backwards. So this is the first time I've ever tried this. So if it's a hot mess, you know, that's it is what it is. I'm not going to worry about it. I, to the point now, I don't even know what's what, what's where, <laughs> anything. All right, we'll go back to the Q-tip, do some squigglies. Maybe. Maybe here I'll do. There's still that a bunch of white paint uh, down there. I don't know. Some kind of crazy mark making. So now I'm just making mud. So I, I probably should because uh, I'm if I just let over layer this now because it's not drying, I'm just gonna end up with you know a whole bunch of stuff I don't want. It's just going to be mud because instead of layering on top, it's just going to start mixing together. You know what I mean? So I don't know how, to, and, and I don't really know how to get around that because if we're, they must be using so much, such a thin layer or, or sorry, using so much acrylic glaze. Maybe that's why. I don't know. You guys had some joke. Takes Dana three hours. Oh, yeah. I didn't. I that was an inside joke that I didn't understand. Okay, so this is getting a hot mess. That's for sure. I'm gonna leave those two for now. Uh, on the video, she did go into all these other areas and whatnot, but it's just gonna make a big mess because I think that there's just too much. Uh, too much paint on it, right? This time I'm just, Yeah, but, but the thing is, is that we're working with the opens. If if you use cheap craft paint trying to paint on the jelly plate, then we're in bad, you won't get a print at all. 
because it'll instantly dry before I finish that layer. All right, just gonna get a or that you know, in my experience, anyways, especially if I talk, forget about it. I hope I said welcome, Andrew. And it's me, a diva. And I apologize, I know I recognize names from, you know, and, and I just forget, but if you tell me once, I usually remember, it jogs my memory. So I apologize if I can't remember your name uh, right off the top, but I do appreciate everybody being here. Okay, start her again. This time, this time I'm not going to draw such big things. <laughs> Let's, right? No, that's right. Hey, Pam. Gosh, like if you watch their video, the Jelly Arts video, she must have done, it seemed like 10 layers or something. I'm not sure. But she, but she did use glazing liquid. So maybe that made a thinner layer than, a, than what I'm doing. So it doesn't, I don't know. I just don't want it to turn into mud. So let's just do a couple layers of that. Start with the crinacridone and a little bit of white in the medium. Of oh, I almost throw myself. I almost threw my piece of thing. Of course, I know who you are, Ellie. I am so sorry. I need a see. I need a sip of coffee. <laughs> I'm so glad you're here though, my friend. I gave uh, I don't know if you watched my video from yesterday. Excuse me, I'm gonna drink a coffee before we start on this one. Now, what should I draw this time? Well, let's just do the ovals that they did. Maybe that'll help me. Or leaf. They weren't really ovals, they were leaf shapes. See, if you use acrylic paint on, or craft paint for sure, regular craft paint, it, this one would already be dry before you even thought about trying to make a print. So. Yeah, excuse me. Drink some coffee, Paula. <laughs> I don't have anywhere to put my brush. It's just driving me mental. It's driving me crazy. Okay. So let's use a bigger catalyst wedge, maybe. Maybe we'll do a little bit of this. I don't know. It's going to look like sneaker shoe prints. Okay, this time we'll start with the new piece of paper. And let's center this bad boy onto my other paper. Yeah, so these are golden open acrylics uh, as opposed to the regular drying acrylics. So that's our first one this time. So even right there, that's a lot of... <laughs> I mean, I could use a heat gun, I suppose. I'm not sure how fast this would dry on there. I don't suppose. I know I can use a heat gun. Now, what color should I go next? Last time I went to there... What color are you guys? Let's, let's, let's try to, uh, I'll take your suggestions. What color should I do next? If I start with pink, a pinkish quinacridone uh, and white mix. A 
toothbrush holder. Oh, that's a great idea, Miss Pris. Thanks, toothbrush holder? Where's my notebook? I gotta write all these good ideas down. <laughs> I gotta forget it, right, Dee Dee? <laughs> Who's writing that down? But of course, Jean wants a secret. Hi, Lou Jean. Oh, so good to see you. Okay. Rescue my uh, toothbrush holder. I guess you could use a cup too, but I have a fancy toothbrush holder. So, Turk, nobody's agreeing. <laughs> nobody's agreeing. <laughs> oh. So Jeannie was first, so I'll do orange. But isn't that the way, the way I did it last time and it turned out crazy? I'm pretty sure it is. You know what? I'm going to use what's right here. This will have to be yellow. Yellow orange mix over here. That's an ugly color. That's bad news. I'll add some white to that bad. It's so good to see everybody. It is also great to see you, Jean. <laughs> I'll just leave it. <laughs> okay, so this time let's let's just try to draw around the shape. See what happens. We're just gonna this time outline. I'm not gonna do any wonky. I took too much art. Try to take too much artistic license in the last one without enough practice. So this time I'm just gonna follow the uh, first design first. first part I make I always forget to go right to the edge you know off the jelly plate so that you get that other oh see there we go it's lost it again Okay, what texture tool shall we use this time? So last time we did some weird things, so this time let's go back and do our, uh, let's just wipe off. Has anyone in the chat uh, tried this before? This type of jelly printing? Or even mono printing like this on not if, maybe if you don't have a jelly plate maybe you do it on something more traditional. Gonna, yeah, then you're gonna sit a minute. It's hot. It's it's the weather's been crazy. It's cold. It's hot. It's cold. I'm sweating. I'm not. Sweating up a storm <laughs> today. It's humid today. So even though, you know, if you were using a different acrylic, like craft paint, you probably wouldn't even be able to wipe this off this easily. I'm just using a, a regular uh, Q-tip and I can just clean this up here because I don't want it to really touch. It's not dipped in anything. It's just a, a cheapy Q-tip, and they, these are dollar store Q-tips. Guess who bought dollar store Q-tips? And yet another thing you should—I can't stand—that <laughs> I have to buy brand name. <laughs> oh. You even use die cuts and masks. Thirty-four. Wow. I just thought I wanted to try something some different and you can clean it all up if if I made too much yellow if I made the yellow too wide I should say I didn't make the yellow all right let's try it this time but yeah maybe I'm like there's a I'm gonna heat gun it in uh, behind me heat gun I know Jane what is wrong with it
but maybe not the like double stuffed whatever they call them ones because you might get some uh oh you might you might get some uh see my plate i think moved around I'm just trying to keep it centered in there you might get some fluffy stuff in your paint if you've got the double double dipped ones i'm not sure what they call them you know what i mean they've got thicker q-tips <laughs> Maybe this time, let's see here. Maybe I'll use a brayer. See, my placement was off. This is just sliding around on me. I don't know if that, that's going to work. My placement was slightly off, or something was off. Oh, it's because I wiped back that yellow. That's what's off. I'm the one that's off. <laughs> I'm the one that's off. Well, that's kind of cool. Oh, I'll get out our other print over. Did I not do a second print from that one? Am I losing it? Did I lose it? Have I lost it? Maybe I didn't do one on it. I didn't do a ghost print. That's not. I guess I didn't. I'll just pull that one. <clears throat> okay. So I, you can still see the outline again of the last part that I did. So now let's go in and add. We'll make a. They've got a bunch of yellow on my brush here. I'll go into this little green pool. I've got to um, put in some glazing liquid. Easy medium. This is not the open stuff. So if you're watching the recording, this is not the open medium. Uh, I, like, I like the phalo better than that. Well, I don't know. It's kind of a weird green color now that probably doesn't go with anything. So let's add white. I need. I need. Pra uh oh. Did I stop where my chat go? I must have hit something. I need to spend a day trying to, thanks Jeannie, trying to just learn how to mix colors. I've got the books. Blade gave me a reference to a good book, a color color guide, and I need a book about color guide and color mixing, and, you know. Okay, so then we have that. So this time we'll just go on the outside here. See, just the inside here. That's probably way too much paint. Could be the problem too, is I'm just too heavy handed. And then this one. The inside here. Go back to the q tip. It's a, it's a nice turquoise. It's kind of a, a, I would call it a slate color. <laughs> like a blue slate, bluish gray. But, all right, this time let's just do. And I'm twisting the Q-tip a little bit as I'm doing this. Well, let's make it. Look, that looked too formal. I'm making it... Uh, What time is it there for you, Ellie? Right now. Yeah, check out my video from yesterday if you got a bit of time out. You can but I talk a lot about my plans for the future. The next layer I think I'll try to use is, I don't think, I will use a stent. Well, I'm worried about using a stencil to wipe through, you know, or, or what, because uh, because it's open acrylic, is it really just going to all the paint transfer to the, st to the stencil and more than usual? 
All right, so I got lots of dots. Can you guys see that? 1050. Here it's 450. So. <clears throat> What's six hours? Oh man! So if I stream tomorrow at nine, uh, yeah, it is recorded. It is recorded. It's last night's recording. Yeah, because when I stream tomorrow, then it's not gonna be. It'll be like in the middle of the night for you. Okay. The next time, well, I, I was I went out shopping today, so I didn't. Uh, you know, dog food, that kind of silliness. Um, so I didn't get a chance to find my blade to my trimmer. Because maybe the next time when I do one of these prints, right, I'll cut it to the right size. Because what's happening, it's moving all around. So, uh, hmm. well, let me just put some Too Faced tape. Never mind that. Anyways, that turned out nice, huh? That's lots of, that's... Open, yes, Lane. Golden developed uh, an acrylic called Open that has a longer drying time. You know what? I'm not going to explain it. I'm going to leave it to the experts <clears throat> and read what the packaging says. So this was the starter set. Let me just pull this little plate first and we'll talk about that. I just want to, I need to, ah, I didn't mark this one. I probably don't have to rush because it is open acrylic. Thanks, Jane. Hopefully yours are going good. Uh, okay, so I want to. I'll read it from the golden package. This is the a starter set. Golden open acrylics feature unique and remarkably relaxed working properties that facilitate blending softening, shading, glazing, and fine detail. I'm sorry, it's ripped, so that's why I'm trying to read. So <laughs> if I'm trying to put the words together here. Um, their ability to remain, remain wet on the palette allows them to be used with natural... Uh-oh. Sorry. To, okay. Their ability to remain wet on the palette allows them to be used with natural fiber brushes and to be employed for diverse techniques including portraiture, plein air painting, mono printing, and screen printing. Open acrylics may be used in conjunction with other golden products for an unparalleled range of working options. No currently known health standards. That's good news. So I think they're just it's kind of closer to uh, an oil-based paint, I think is what they're trying to say, but open air or plain air painting. So they dry a lot slower, is what we're trying to say. Hi Jamie. Hi Lindsay. Good to see you. I think. Yeah. Hopefully I said a little enjoyage. Okay, so I just got some paint. I get. I hate the thought of wasting paint, especially when it's golden. Yeah. So I just bought that tiny box. It's a pl yeah. It came in a, a plastic box. I think I bought it at Curry's in Canada, the starter set. Um, but I do see they sell them at Michaels of a starter set. You know, maybe if you have a fifty percent off coupon, that's for sure. We see you. Hey, Dixie. Oils, yeah, and then they forget it. But I guess they're trying to get close to them, but still remaining. I guess they're not close, but you know what I mean. Okay, so I wiped off my brush. Let's look at our original. We have, I think I need something in here, eh? Or what? Or should we call this done? <laughs> Maybe a couple more. Oh, are you going out for girls' nights? Nice. I don't know if Simon's going to want to go out for dinner because it was his birthday yesterday. Was it yesterday? Yeah. It's the second. <laughs> oh. 
what should we do? Just a little bit of blue? Right here, maybe? A little bit of something. I want some straight quinacridone. Well, not quinacridone, um, phthalo blue green shade. And, and we talked, I think we talked about this yesterday, I'm pretty sure. Yes, acrylic products, or excuse me, artist grade products are expensive. But many things, you know, including this, I, I can't, I had this since 2002. I mean, it's three quarters of the way done. But there's nothing wrong with the medium, you know. They, and they just last, they do really last a long time. A little, you only need a tiny bit, whether, you know, whether when you're working with a craft or a student graded paint, you end up having to use more because it has less pigment in it. All right, a little bit there. Maybe this time I'm just going to use... I'm just going to use this balled up piece of <clears throat> well the, the thing with a jelly plate it's mono printing so uh, mono printing uh, is an art in itself right you're never going to get the same thing twice and uh, so people use it for backgrounds yes but this time I'm you know I'm building up a picture not really a picture but a print. Yeah, they could write words on it, maybe not. But you're you, essentially you're making an old background. But you know what? An, another video I saw with the opens. Yeah, that turned out bad news over here. Don't like how that blue turned out. See, that's why this is an, uh, an art. It's not easy. <laughs> no, it's, it's easy, but it's, you know what I mean? It's collage. You can do a million things with the, the backgrounds. But I, I did see on Jelly Plate, the last video, they, ha they put up an image. Because I was only wanting to watch the ones with the open acrylics. The softer one looks pretty nice. Um, but they put an image, something that they wanted to paint. Let me see. I think I got something right here. Underneath the jelly plate. Right? And then, what do I have on my brush here? They painted around the image. This is from the Jelly Arts website. I'll just, well, I won't do your hand there. This is, uh, sorry, the Jelly Print, Jelly Arts YouTube channel. Or I could have just painted that whole thing and take a Q-tip. So I can see, I can see through I can see through the jelly plate. I don't know how well you guys can see. So all of this, you know, this is all open, even the thinnest parts of paint. And we've been painting now for probably what, at least 35 minutes. And uh, sorry, all those, I've got so many reminders popping up on my phone. Anyway, now I completely forgot what I was saying. What was I saying? I don't know. <laughs> Completely blank. Keep that happening.
so you can paint a picture on the plate and then you know it creates a monoprint You'll never have the same painting, but you're working in reverse, right? Compared to if you, if you were, I was painting this, or I guess what you see is going to be the reverse. I don't know. Scratch what I just said made absolutely no sense, even to myself. <laughs> so they showed taking a Q-tip and fixing her up here. What did I do wrong? That looks wrong. The cup. Sorry, I'm, I might, if I apologize if I'm sticking my head in. Oh no, I'm getting tweets. Who's tweeting me? I should turn it. I should stop talking with the brush in my mouth. <laughs> That's a start. So you can clean it up with your brush. Oh, that's what I was saying. It's it, even the very bottom. We've been on for like 40 minutes. It's none of this is dried to my palette yet. Look, so open acrylics do stay open for a very long time. Sorry, Carrie. Hope you're doing well wherever you are. <laughs> okay. Then I can go on to the different color. What color do we want our cup? Where's the white? Mm. Oh, all the way over here. You wouldn't have been able to see it. <laughs> Thanks, Jean. Thanks, Jean. I'll make it green for Jean. Lighter green. And then I'll mix with a little bit more acrylic green. This is phthalo green blue shade. So the set that I got, because I like to buy the trial sets before, you guys. This is the modern color set. Um, which I suppose that means that there's a maybe a different color. A vintage color set? I'm not sure. So, no. Um, they have them at Blix? Uh, or I don't believe so. You can't get them at Michael's, but Michael's is selling one. I'm just going to color this in now. It, my brush, because I leave it in water, is shedding the paint that's around the barrel of the brush. is shedding everywhere. But anyways, at Michael's, I saw a Stampendous printing plate. I did tweet a picture of it. It was a very shaky picture because I was in the store and trying to do it fast. Uh, but anyway, it's I, if a quarter of an inch thick. It's very, very thin, which you know what? Doing that thing when I said that, you know, if you do regular printing, you could, that might work. So I haven't tried it. It's very thin. I, I don't know if that would be a detriment or, um, or if it'll work the same or if maybe you can just get other cool things. I don't think it'd be bad to buy better than nothing. That's for sure. In Canada, it was 29, it was either, th no, 34.95. So that means that in the States, it would probably be $21.99 if the prices are still around the same. And then you could, you know, use your coupon or whatnot. So anyways, once you had a basic shape, uh, on their video they did uh, pairs, I think. So you watch their process, the whole process of... Um, Of them layering the pairs. The depth won't make a difference. But I'm just wondering, maybe not for printing Jane necessarily. It, see, here's the thing. I think the depth does make a difference. I'll get on my soapbox for one second. <laughs> not a soapbox. I'll talk about uh, printing. So, as you guys know, or some of you know, I was a quality manager in a box plant. And when we printed with printing plates, so, you know, flexo printing, flexographic printing, uh, 
I'm just adding like darker greens in here and whatnot. The uh, the printing plate was the same thing. You had to have a certain thickness of the ink of the of the rubber, but the diameter of everything made you know made a big difference. And if the sponge or the backing plate backing we would call it, if you had double the sponge, right? So if the boys were having problems with getting a, a good impression of the print, they'd add more, you know, more cushion for the pushing, shall we say? <laughs> cushion for the printing. <laughs> so, so it's I, I, I believe, and even when Jean did it the other day, you get it, it almost like she got a softer image when she printed. So I think it might make a difference that way. A slight difference. You might not even notice. I'm talking about flexographic printing that's like, you know, you're printing, uh, you know, we were fancy stuff anyways. Obviously you don't need that fine detail, uh, that fine of a detail if you're not doing it. But it might. But also what I'm more worried about, is it going to rip? Is it going to rip? Gina, Jane, are you talking to me? It's very thin. It's not as cushy. So it's, you know, you might get a sharper image or a, not a sharper image. You know what I mean. Anyway, what did I want to do? Oh, I was going to put some. Oh, my. My brush is just dropping. I'm going to have to use a different brush. It's just dropping orange paint like crazy from the dried up paint from the brush. Don't leave the brushes in water. How big were what pieces? So when you said how big were the pieces, how much pressure was on the mangle? I mean, I'll use a note. It's a more it's a more cushy layer, so um, but I think it'd be awesome when you start doing two jelly print. I don't know. I I'm just envisioning two plates together, put them like this, push them together, what happens? What happens if you have your stencil inside? Like that's the type of crazy stuff that I look at, but I didn't have the money to buy one that day. Um I have to get oh Jean, did you just did I see that there's a fifty percent off coupon? I don't know, I shouldn't be buying myself when it's so, so myself something when it's Simon's birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday, Simon. I bought you a jelly plate. <laughs> yeah, that would go over so well. All this stuff is still wet, eh? I'm just, I don't know why I'm saying A all the time. Can you hear my stomach growling? I apologize if you can. All right, let me just show you. Um, let's find, we'll do some more of this. This I've got this piece of paper towel. Get him the jelly plate. Yes, he needs the fifty-five dollar one. No, I don't have that much money. I was I was excited because my, uh, as I was saying earlier, my nieces and sister and brother-in-law are going to Disney on Sunday, and uh, because it's their birthday, which they've never been before either. So I'm just putting some texture in into this. Uh, so, anyways. Now I don't remember why I was telling that story. Oh my goodness. I need it. Why was I saying? Oh, so I went to Walmart and got Monster High dolls for $10. If anyone has young kids, I guess they know. <laughs> so I'm going to take this stencil. This happens to be a artist seller. C-E-L-L-A-R stencil. I'm just going to press it in. Should have done this one for National Coffee Day, but I was so excited. So for me, you know, I'm on a I'm on a limited budget now, 
So to to get them a nice birthday present that they will love for ten dollars was like the best thing ever. So I was happy happy about that. Oh, well, let's just do this. I think this is going to be. You get the idea. You put something underneath the plate. I'm going to get my. Where did my break? Oh, it's right here, of course. A mango. Is that what I said? Hmm. You mean the feed roller? You mean the analogs roll? There's different ways to print. Uh, so the analogs in flexographic printing, the analogs roll is what picks up the... I should have put some more texture over here or whatnot. But then you can play around with it. You know, that was just a quick thing while we were chatting. Oh, I do have some extra stuff there. I was going to say, let's let it dry, but that could take forever. <laughs> Don't see my stream. Oh, that's bad news. I'm going to take another print off that, I suppose. Let's see if that'll print on one of these miter pieces that I've already have a print on over here. Let's see what happens from a, a completely different jelly plate plating session. I uh, mean, not that one. That one's got too much stuff on it already. Mm, those ones are all too, too dark. But it's fun to try something different other than, you know, all the stencils on jelly plates and, and you know, build up the layers. I like to try to build up layers. Well, let's see. It's not going to be dark enough, but When we print it in box making, well, we're talking about fancy machines that do 20, 000, print 20,000 boxes an hour. <laughs> oh, there's my little cup over there. But anyways, that was interesting. I am painting my wax paper container so I can put my cycle down. So you're going to re-roll it. Roll it. Oh yeah, we're not talking about one. We're talking about printing. These machines go fast. Some of them are faster than you see. Now, did, uh, I call them my boys. Did the boys, the boys ever run it that fast? Hardly. <laughs> but, oh, we're talking printing. And I'm talking printing stuff like beer boxes or... You know, uh, Bacardi, if anybody drinks Bacardi, Malibu rum and stuff, I don't think so. That the, those are the type of boxes that we make. Or we, I shouldn't say we. I don't work there anymore. I haven't worked there in a while. We used to make. I used to make. So I do know a bit about printing. And, and it's interesting because, you know, you're talking about watercolor, watercoloring and wedding paper and paper sizing and fibers and, you know, we made corrugate out of paper. So, you know, and I don't, I've never correlated between the two when I knew, okay, your, your paper needs to be preconditioned. You have to put water, blah, 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 blah to make it go like this. And then if you don't do, and you know, if you don't do it right, you don't heat it flat, it's not going to stay flat, but there's a lot of parallels that I just never really, except for die cutters. I can remember back in, Back in the day, when I first started scrapbooking, and I worked on the production floor, um, and I ran a machine, I ran a folder gluer for many years. That's also one of my skills. Anybody need a flexo domino operator? Post? Matic? <laughs> but anyways, um, 
and and they knew I did all this stuff, right? And they all used to make fun of me or tease me. I shouldn't say make fun, but that was a running joke, right? They would tease me. And, uh, you know, at one point I sold Stampin' Up! or whatever. But then they came out with the the first Sizzix, you know, the, the die cutter. Because we had fancy die cutters at work, obviously, to cut corget into the shapes. Like, we had flatbed die cutters. And it was the best thing. Like, they couldn't believe that I could buy my own die cutter. <laughs> and... <laughs> And do that, so it was kind of cool that way, though. Sorry, one second, just want to look. I don't know where that is. <clears throat> anyway, that was pretty fun. What made me start doing videos originally? YouTube videos? Because once I found out that YouTube was a whole world uh, that j wasn't just people fighting in stupid craziness, right? That Because really, that's what I thought it was. Um... That's, you know, really, that's all I thought it was, was those kind of people fighting and not. And so I stayed clear of that. I didn't want to have any part. I hate that. I don't want any part of that. So, uh, try to think of what we do. I'll just start painting. Use up some of this paint here. So anyways, once I found out, and I don't even remember how, uh, that was, it was the time when I started art journaling. Oh, you know what? I think it started progression. Art journaling magazine came out. And maybe it was Pam Carricker. Anyways, I found through YouTube. And then I found uh, YouTube videos, like journal flips. And I was obsessed with watching journal flips. And most of the time, I think it was, uh, you know, sketchbooks and journals and whatnot. And at that time, I had just started art journaling. And I said, hey, I'd like to put my videos on there. Why not share, you know? And I just, so I just did. My, I uploaded some journal flips with the terrible light, but I just thought, I'm going to put it out there and see what happens. Then I broke my ankle at work, and uh, I was literally laid up for a long time. So then I thought, well, I'm just going to start putting out technique ones as well as journal flips. It's like, you know, I had the time. I also had a lot of time to art on the couch and uh you know i couldn't move anywhere like i severely broke my ankle that's been what four years now and i was literally bedridden to the couch like i couldn't even go up and down the stairs go to the bathroom it was it was bad i really broke my ankle bad but anyway so i had all that time so i had started doing more videos and um creating more art and then i don't know who it was i started seeing uh Somehow I found out about Blades Ustream, so I went over there, or maybe it was less first, I can't remember. Like, it all blend, it was so long ago, right, that this was all in 2009 that I can't, I'm sure Joyce might remember what happened where I met first, but I met a bunch of you guys first at Blades, for sure, that's when I started chatting. And I thought, hey, I can do that. And I made a test. And a couple people went to my test. I don't know if it was Joyce was at that test or not. I had a test. And a couple, like three or four people showed up and I couldn't believe it. And uh, it's just, you know, YouTube has been done. Uh, I really love YouTube and I'm going to continue uploading to YouTube. And I, I enjoy sharing what I know. Okay, let's try a big catalyst wedge here. I don't know what I, I don't know why I did that. <laughs> I was meant to be destiny for YouTube. Then it was interesting because at that time I didn't know, and you know, apparently a lot of artists use Vimeo, and I did for a little bit have a Vimeo, but I guess I just liked. Um, the people on YouTube or the videos I was watching on YouTube 
I like, I am a one hit wonder, one take wonder. I, even when I taped my DVD, except my intro, I was a little no, nervous. So when I said, hi, my name's Paul Phillips, so that I goofed, but that's it. Like I, I didn't have to, you know, stop, do something again or whatnot. I was, uh, I'm pretty good. I like, I enjoy it. I just like to be me and talk what's going on in my head at the same I like to speak out loud what's the process, what's going on in my head, like the process that I'm doing. That sounds like I want to say, you like to talk to yourself? Yeah, I talk to myself. Yeah, and then we all, and then it was just, you know, there were some awesome people that, uh, I got into a good group of friends on YouTube. Irene Butterfly Kisses, Rachel, Laurel, Sharon, and, and, um, I still love all their work, of course. Still love all of them. And it just built from there. I mean, there was, when we were, when I was at full steam, I mean, it would get over 100 people. I, and I enjoy it. And I enjoy it. And I'm glad I'm back. And uh, like anything, take some practice to get back into the game. But I'm here. I got my uniform on. <laughs> Guys, I'm now I'm just doing nothing because I had a whole bunch of paint, whole bunch of paint on there. Yeah, and Mickey, like I before YouTube, that reminds me because before YouTube, even before those good friends, I had good friends like Joyceage and Mickey and Flickr because I used to post all my art journal pages on Flickr, Flickr, and some art journaling groups on Yahoo groups. So sometimes some of my friends from those times come in and see oh right I don't know this print oh it's gonna happen so Joyce Edge then found me have I seen any of yours? Yes, Jamie. I just, I, I just, subs no, you know what? I didn't watch any yet. I lied. I don't think I did watch any yet, but I'm going to. Hot mess. That, that's, see, that's bad news. See how shiny that paint is? I bet you I can make a mono print of this paper without the jelly plate. Let's see. When did I first drink? June 23rd, 2010. Yeah, I wish uh, But now I can't remember my Flickr password, so... So all of my old art journal pages are still up on Flickr. From the very first one on. And some scrapbooking. But I enjoy it. I enjoy uploading YouTubes, and uh, if it didn't take eight hours... No. Yeah, I just got that came off. It's, I guess it's a tie-dye? <laughs> Some tie-dye there. Well, it's funny because this is bothering me, so now... So you can go on top of... Oh, I'm going to mess this up. You can paint back over and add more layers and then jelly print again. I mean, it's endless, right, what you can do. See, the open acrylic, the one thing, the one thing I like about using the craft paint and stuff is to get the dry, you know, when you get the dry stuff on your plate and you get that nice clean, when you get the cleaning prints or whatever you guys call them. Pulls, prints. Okay, I don't know why I'm staring this because that's not my jelly plate. <laughs> oh no. I wonder if Angela's trying to, are you trying to watch from Facebook? Because sometimes you can watch from Facebook, right? Or am I not correct? I don't know. No, no, you don't need no one. <laughs> no, it's okay, Joyce. Let's see how we'll dry it. Like, this is still wet. 
After all this time, it's been sitting there. Anyway. <clears throat> yeah, it's been it's been a good journey. It's been, I can't believe it's been this long. Like it's just amazing how long uh, it's been. And I was all doing that. I mean, while working. Full time job. How not to jelly plate? Welcome. <laughs> but yeah, if you go to. You know what? I'm not even sure if my Flickr is Journal Artista, actually. That was before when I went by. Because when I first opened my blog and did all this, it wasn't until I opened a YouTube channel that I that I said that I wanted to be called Journal Artista. Um, and I don't really remember how I came up with that name, but I wanted a name that people would remember, if that makes sense. <laughs> that either they could remember me by Paula Phillips or they could say, hey, Journal Artista. Because, you know, it's hard to remember. Nine nine eight one seven, you know, some of those names like that. So I really wanted to find one that would tell people what I do and that they could remember. Well, it's not a big deal, Joyce. I mean, it's, uh, like I said, I've posted there forever, in years, because I don't remember the, I don't remember the password, nor do I remember the password for the Yahoo account that I needed to open up that one, because I never used it for anything other than to open up, um, the Flickr account, so. So there's lots of paint on this, and, uh, the one thing about opens is that's not going to dry. very quickly so I'm pretty sure I'll be able to bray this this brayer is a uh, definitely more dense so because you're working with open acrylics when you're working with craft paint or regular acrylics you can't do anything with this you can get a faint image maybe but I didn't spray any water on this or anything like that um, but there's lots of good stuff still left on that too. That's also uh, one of the newer artist seller stencils. All right, so I just painted over that. Let us find a print, not a print, a page to print on. Well, because we're playing today, I'm gonna print this right on here. You think, what do you think is gonna happen? Tomorrow night, I'll be on at 9.30, 9 o'clock for a chat, or whenever Dara's finished, usually she's finished by that time, but uh, but 9.30 official, p.m. Eastern time. <laughs> We're making mud. We're making mud. Let's see. Get out the old art journal. I am running out of space in my art room. Jan, I don't know if Jan's still here, but she's another one of one of the girls on YouTube that really like her from you know way back when I first started YouTube Jan Gray that is it did look like shoe prints because because I drew ovals and then I drew in with a squiggly with the uh, 
this catalyst wedge. So yeah, it look it definitely look like shoe prints. But look how that's nice. I like that. And it, like this stuff just goes and goes and goes, but then you never get that you never really do get that uh, final print, I suppose. Let's see if any of these will be light enough. It's been 27 months since I posted on Flickr. That's crazy. It's been a long time. Because now I post all my pictures. Well, then I start posting pictures on Flickr. And then I, or sorry, Facebook. And now, now I post all my pictures on Instagram. Uh, that was too translucent by that time. This is, to me, I do too many colors or something. This is all look like, or the wrong colors probably. They just all look like hot messes. Oh, except this one turned out nice. These are done for a while ago. Am I bored yet? It says Saddlest. I should say like Sadie Paula 78, I think. Oh, I have those, like, poor brush peeled everywhere. Let me get a baby wipe in it. I clean up my hands a bit. What do you guys suggest? Bored? <laughs> I know. Oh yeah, I think that's what happened too, Joyce, is that I went pro and then that ran out or something. And I like really once once I started going on Facebook and doing Ustream, you know, I kind of showed everything or not Facebook, YouTube and Ustream. I kind of showed everything live. Like when I first started YouTube, I did journal flips all the time of what I was working on. Like because, you know, I was literally on the couch for a month and a half. Um and then Quite quickly, I went from YouTube. After I broke my ankle, I went quick. Well, probably three months after, or three weeks, four weeks after I broke my ankle. Enough where I could sit up and prop it underneath the table. Then that's when I started streaming. And then I just showed everything live all the time. I didn't share many pictures. Because, you know, I'm, one, I'm also in the bad about blogging club. Okay, what should we do? Should we, this time, should we try some squares? Still got lots of so we did oh that's ugly. My mixing is now turning into and I put too much gloss in there. That that didn't go so well. Alright, we'll just paint the whole page again and do some we'll make a very big hot mess. But there's always, you know, so many sites. I was thinking about that the other day. You know, there's so many sites and the new ones and new trends come and go. And like, it took me a while to go to Instagram. I, I kind of waited to see, you know, is this one of those fading trends going to be around a while before I said, oh, that's what I like. That's where I want to start posting my pictures again. But the one good thing about Flickr is you had, you know, you can create albums. So then I could say, oh, this is this art journal. And that's, you know. Flickr or Instagram, you just see a timeline, you just see the pictures in order. So right now I'm just I'm just gonna use up the rest of this paint that's on this palette and so hopefully you guys will try something different painting, doing prints like this rather than you know how much paint I have on this? Oh my goodness, this is not, probably not very smart. Probably not painting. 
not smart. This is also a catalyst wedge. It's just the kind of um, straight one, I suppose. It's got so it does have the rounded corners if you want to do something rounded, but not for me today. So I don't have uh, anything particular in mind when I'm do when I'm doing this right now, but maybe I should have thought of the thought first. for a second because there's so much extra paint on there and it's not going to dry because you know we're using open that is a lot of paint all right I'm not going to rub the, I'm not going to rub very hard I'm going to make a solid print but I'm not going to I hope I didn't go out today with too much paint on me I don't know if I did or not Incidental printing. I said I'm not going to press hard. No, no. I always find I get a flash, like the red. When I look at the when I look at my color right now on screen, it looks absolutely terrible. Serendipitous, absolutely. There's lots of people who call it. I'm just wiping off, wiping back onto the plate the rest of that red. Maybe I'll pick up this green here. I just want to use up what's on my palette here. Maybe we'll go on to the different, just regular, you know, do some with stencils or something. You know, I'm just learning, so I don't know if this is going to turn into mud or work out or what right now exactly. It's or you look good. I'm just going to put it down, and then if it doesn't work, then you can say next time, oh yeah, I did that wrong. That's bad news, and do it a different way. Don't ask me what I'm doing. Throw them paint down. Printing with my dry ink pads? Dry ink pads. DY ink pads. Is DY, I'm assuming it's dry? DY. Yeah, that's a, I, I have a I have a practice enough in my jelly plate for sure. I have this well, everything that I've done jelly has in this one little manila folder that's half an inch thick maybe. Hmm. Well, you see, a dye ink pad. So what do you do with a dye ink pad? You stamp the ink pad on the paper. Or you stamp, put stamps, or you stamp, ink your stamp, and then put it on the paper. Oh! Oh, 
Oh, you put the dye ink, dye ink on the jelly plate. Well, I definitely have dye refills. Lots. Like Adirondack refills. I'm running out of room to put to put uh, prints. Like, look at how many prints I'm getting off of this. Let's see. What would happen if I put it on top of this one? Right from the ink pad. Yeah, I don't know how much chat lag there is. I'm just going to wipe off some of this. I haven't perfected just regular paint. <laughs> not perfected. I haven't even... Perfect is not even the right word. Uh, I'm beyond novice. Who's tweeting me? Oh, that <laughs> Want to see my haul today? And it wasn't a haul, it was a gift. My mom got me some duct tape. Sorry for the glare. It looks like different washi tapes or something. That was a fun duct tape. I'm going to use it for a binding. Probably. They had One Direction duct tape, and my sister was going to buy it for my niece. And it was nine ninety four or 97 whatever numbers they always use. $9, 10 bucks for washi tape, or for duct tape. Are you kidding me? Oh, thanks, Jean. Nope, this one's rectangle, but there is an 8 by 8 inch square, right? Or no, 6 by 6 inch square. There's no 8. 6 by 8, 8 inch circle. That's where I get confused. 8 inch circle, my mom got one of those. 6 by 6 square. This is 8 by 10. There's another big mama jama one that Jean has. So I think it's 12 by 14. And then there's smaller ones. It's like the smaller just leave it like that. They're smaller. That's all I know. <laughs> Alright. So. We're done with that. Now we're I'm telling you. I've got papers everywhere. And stuff. That, where am I going to put this? <laughs> if you hear any bang. If you hear a. If you hear a loud crash. Just ignore it. True blood duct tape. It was just like pictures of them, like little Polaroid, full Polaroid pictures and stuff. Like, I don't even have die cut. I have, a, of course, lots of stencils. Now, where? Ooh, I lied. Let us see something. Yikes. Where I get them? Oh, Fisker's plates. So I'll keep practicing with some of those open technique. Oh, you know what? I feel like anyway. I need to I, I need to practice those. So hopefully, hopefully, guys, you will practice too and give me some tips. I'm looking for die cuts. I thought I had some in this bag, this thing I have here, but maybe not. Because I don't have like big, uh, you know, we'll use stencils, I suppose. I'm hot. It is humid. We're, I'm wetting up a storm over here. <laughs> I don't know why I say that, guys. I just think it's hilarious. All right, what do I want to do? I just want to play, I guess, now unless somebody has any. Or Jean said she wanted me to put ink on there. So I put ink on there, then what? You do the same thing with all your tools? 
You draw into it, do use stencils. Cause let me tell you, I got ink. I just so happen to have a whole bunch of Adirondacks dye inks right here. Oregano, terracotta, and raised uh, raisin. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh my goodness, there's absolute, I'm telling you, there's paper everywhere. And the thing about this, this is nowhere near dry. Well, I should say nowhere near. But with the open, like this is, all of these are still wet and workable. Like I could remove that right now. So, you know, you can't really stack them up or then they would might, they might stick together. Because I'm not sure how long some of these. <laughs> okay, but then what do I do? Okay. Put down layers of ink. Then stamp on top and pull all at once. Do you stamp into the ink while it's on a plate or when the paper's down? Yeah, that's what I need, Jen. That, I used to have that all the time when, when I had my broken, my bad foot. Well, foot, ankles. Let's not get into that. Oh, we can just put down some ink. We'll start with the lightest color. I do. This is Cap. No, so these are the old Adderall. I've had these bad boys since I first started stamping in the early 2000s. And you can take the lid off. If you still have these old pads, they come off. They're different now, obviously. Probably they've gone through two generations since this one, I think. But look how good that is. They don't, you know, if you if, if you have good stuff, except for embossing powder, apparently now I know that, uh, now I know embossing powder goes old. <laughs> but most of my stuff, you know, I've, I've been pretty lucky for, you know, all this stuff that's for so long. And not too much is cheap markers for sure, stuff like that, but... But all my, you know, my full 48 Stampin' Up ink pads. Step one, put down ink. I'm almost done the ink, Jean. All right, I should take this off. All right. Done. Put down ink. And wait. Get some paper while I'm waiting for the chat. Using a stamp and oh, oh! I shouldn't have used all those ink colors then. Uh, oh, Ponderosa Pine. Okay, I got some. Now you're going to see some retro close to my heart inks too. Let's see if these bad boys still work. Retro. Retro. Uh, when I say this one's retro, I mean, I don't, we won't go there. A long time. This doesn't come off. What am I doing? I'm supposed to be stamping with it. I'm all flabber. Flipper. Flubber. Flabbergasted. Let's see. Well, I got a script stamp I was using yesterday, so let's try that. Darker color. Uh, not dark enough, I don't think. Or, I guess maybe you should use that's too uh, too fine of a stamp, eh? Maybe? Too detailed of a stamp. We'll go back to my... Whoops. That one worked. 
Oh, it does show up on paper. Oh, oh, so then I'm going to have two different stamps. That was a wiggled. I wiggled that one. It's a slippery, slippery process over here. <laughs> but I'm having fun. Thanks for helping. I suppose not even inking could do cool things too because you're kind of picking up ink. Let's see. We're in the middle. Could be a hot mess. Alright. And that's it, Jean. Try it. Try it. Yeah, I don't need to use it on glossy. I didn't bring any glossy cardstock out, I hope. Because glossy cardstock. Now that would be awesome, probably. Oh, I could do cool things. Oh. Pull print, sorry. I just got a million ideas of I mean, you remember years ago I did that the glossy act Versamark on glossy paper and then brayering ink on it? What if you had Versamark on glossy paper? And then anyway, see what happens. Ooh. Cool. Now maybe I put because that pad it, in fact <laughs> these Adirondack pads that are like 15 years old. I would have bought these in 2002 and 3 when I was traveling because Club Scrap, when we went to the Club Scrap retreats in 2002 and 2003 or 3 and 4, whatever, we went, to, um, Tim Holtz was there. So, of course, Ranger was there. Where, you know, that's when he first came out with his distress pads and, and stuff. So, that's where I stocked up on all of those. But do you think, Gene, I put too much? Brayer the ink. Oh, that's what I did wrong. Oh. oh. Don't use glossy paper. It will mess up the gel plate. Oh, thanks, Lou Jean. So if anyone's watching recording, don't use glossy paper. It could stick and ruin the jelly plate. But there's different types of glossy paper, though, right? There's that clay-coated one, and then there's... I don't know. But I'm... Well, I'm sure there's a bunch of stampers that have already tried that, so I... I will, uh, now I wish I had my squeaky ranger brayer. I wonder where that one is. The tiny one that fits the ink pads. Huh. I tried to look for the other day, just a bug Jonna. Was it Jonna that <laughs> Ooh. Okay, let's see. So if we're going to brayer, let's brayer on the, uh, cabin fever. This is a one of their rainbow die pads and with rainbow die pads you don't want to go this you always want to one go the same way not back and forth back and forth because you're you always just want to lift up go down maybe this doesn't look like it's as much but maybe that's because I now I don't have a clean brayer so that's bad news this may be complete Because it looks like there's nothing on here, Jean. No kind of glossy paper. Th is it supposed to look like there's nothing on there? Oh, okay. Thank you. It doesn't help when your brain... Are I need I need to find that small brayer that I would just use kind of for stamp. Okay. Now. Okay. So we shall use this magenta stamp. See what happens. I'm gonna remove some. And then I'll go in with the, let's see, I'll go back to the over ponderosa top. It's probably not even, who knows if it's the color, same color or not. I just happy where, get happy when my really old things still work. I mean, if it was dried out because I used it a million, you know, I used it up, that's one thing. But really the only thing that flopped that, was those stamping up craft ink pads or pigment ink or whatever they call them I can't even remember now 
and they fixed them. That I, I'm talking, this was the very first release they ever did of the craft ink pads. They leaked everywhere, oil separate, separated. It was bad news. Bad, bad news. Thanks, Jean. This is fun. I'm gonna stand up. I'm gonna use this to clean up my beer at the same time. Mm. However, I think over time my uh, <laughs> blended ink pad looks like it's completely blended to brown. Looks like you're completely blended to, blended to brown, but that's nice. Look at this nice one. Oh. Okay, I know. Our quality... When we first started Ustream, our quality wasn't this bad. And and see, I thought I wasn't, I thought I wasn't putting enough on there, so I put more because it was before Jen, uh, Jean told me that you didn't need it, and because my brain said no, I want more. I'm gonna trust you. <laughs> trust you, Jean. Well, I haven't tried printing with some links, so ink, Liquitex ink. What's going to happen if I mush this around with my brayer? Nice. That'd, that'd be nice to cut down. And I got, I mean, obviously I was just using some, uh, and you know what's silly? I just thought, the, I just remembered the other day, I did buy two classes a while ago from Julie, Julie Faye Fan Balzer uh, at balzerdesigns.com. Uh, she has ten dollar classes like and i did buy intro to watercoloring believe it or not and a jelly plate and i i don't think i ever watched it isn't that silly sometimes i do that and then i procrastinate and then next thing you know i forget and then ink may stain well that's bad news bad oh yeah there's not even staying on it oh this is fun though it's like Quick before it goes. Okay, so it's a what not to use on the jelly plate day today. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Don't use permanent. Well, this was acrylic ink. Wow, well, there's lots of splots. It didn't stain the plate. This is this is acrylic ink. It's not a pigment ink like a or a, a permanent dye ink. Oh no, sorry. This is a it's acrylic. So I don't know if that makes it matter. Like it is permanent. It's acrylic. It's acrylic. So acrylic is plastic, right? I think <laughs> I'm gonna sound like an idiot <laughs> before I. It's permanent, but it's not, it's not a stain. You know what I mean? Like, it's acrylic, not a dye ink. Or India ink, yeah, it's an acrylic ink. Don't use India ink, you'd be... But, but even if you did use India ink, I guess what would happen, it would stain the plate, but it wouldn't, like, eat the plate or damage the plate other than making it black or a different color, right? I mean, it beads up everywhere. That doesn't help anything. It just beads up and sinks into the paper. It is like acrylic paint, but it's just this liquid. See? I just want to test this. This has me curious, this pad now. And I'm about to wrap up here, guys, because it's six and sign in. I said, I apologize. Yeah, see, that's, that didn't work out. So my rainbow pad must have been stored sideways, maybe when I was moving or something. And now it's just brown. But I don't got a problem with brown, I suppose. Put that up here so I know. I'm not sure if all of them are like that, because I also have big and juicy pads that are like that. India ink. 
I think sure it's, it would only be a dye ink that stains it. I mean, these are dye inks. Oh, they're not permanent. Yes, they're not permanent. We already talked about that. Never mind. Never mind. I am. But what if, say, this is some basics? It's almost empty. What if? Yeah, I gotta go. I'm starving. I don't know if he's want to go out. He's taking his nap right now. Oh, goodness. I'm using a watercolor paper pad over here as a brush off. That doesn't matter. But anyways, I'm just going to see what happens when I put ink on top of maybe nothing. This is acrylic, Liquitex acrylic ink. My stomach is just growling away. I'm going to have to, no amount of coffee is going to stop it. I want a kind of a painterly look. So this is a free, Liquitex freestyle brush. I'm going to get it wet here. Oh, I got to remember now, all that practicing with open acrylics. Now I got to remember I'm not using open anymore and I need... Like, I can just see painting a landscape and being over here. No. <laughs> Not today. I just want to see what's going to happen if I mix these two. Bye, right, Joyce. And I'm telling you, these are old Fiskars and Boss. Ooh, look. There's a Halloween one. These are old Fisker and Boss plates. Make some cobwebs for Halloween. Oh, is Carrie just finally got home? Carrie. Did you get any goodies? I should say first, did you have a nice outing with, with the hubs? Then did you get any goodies? <laughs> You know, Joyce, I always say, oh, I'm going, and then next thing you know, I did, I do something else, and I do something else. It's all like the rest of us, right? All right. Well, this is, I got some new, new duct tape that my, my mom gifted me, got, got me. It's like a little wa other washi. Looks like little washi tapes. The only thing I bought was dog food and body wash for Simon. It's always exciting. I don't think the acrylic ink there did any different than if you. I'm not sure, but I'm not sure it did really did anything different. But you know what? I put the ink on top of the paint. You know what I mean, Vern? So what if I put the ink and then the paint? Here I go again. See, I'm moving. I mean, I don't. See, Liquitex ink, FW inks, I, F and W, are they acrylic? Process magenta. The yeah, these are the F and W ones that also say artist acrylic inks. Okay, I got some matte medium. Twenty five and I, and I saw jeans goodies. Everybody had some good shopping today. Now. Well, I don't know why I put red and purple, because that's bad news all, all together. Jean got some goodies. Mm -hmm. 
And I'm going to add some of that purple paint again. It's, I need one of those. Well, I shouldn't say I need one. I admit the one Mitzi gave me one. At least one, maybe more than one. You know those those toothpaste squeezers, toothpaste roller squeezer me thingy me doos. And now I'm going to put acrylic paint over the Liquid Text acrylic ink and see what happens. Because the last print I did it the opposite. I put down paint and then ink. So I think this is like watering down the paint, kind of. That's lots. Wowzers, that's bright. Oh, I can't sing. Can't sing. See how some of it's moving and some of it won't. Oh, that's going to be cool. It's going to be like... It'll be almost like a full crackle. Oh, please don't be something that we did that nobody's done and I have to do an upload to YouTube thing. <laughs> I'm just teasing. So see how it's kind of, you know, resists a little bit. Oh, what do we want to put in there? We want to put some texture. Let's put this stencil. Just kind of stamping the stencil in a few spots. This is messy business. Hoo-wee! Because I put a lot of ink. Just didn't, okay, good. Thanks, Tracy. So then why do you tell me what to do it from the beginning? Everything's been done. And now I've got that song in my head again. Ooh, interesting. I think I put too much paint. I'm not sure what kind of glare you guys are seeing. Should have been more prepared with other sheets. I must fend for myself. Thanks, Joyce. Thanks. I must make my own mistakes. Oh, that no, that's just bad news right there. Now that's just bad news. But now, right, this is when I can let it dry. Yeah, while we're letting this one dry, I'll show you what all the ones we have done so far. Uh -huh. mm, they're all over the place. Well, Jaden showed me how to do ink pads. Wearing ink pads and then stamping with dye inks, regular dye, not permanent dye inks. This is one of the first mono prints we did <clears throat> with painting with gold and open acrylics directly on the jelly plate. Now, it looks funny because my jelly plate is smaller than my paper. But when I cut this down, you know, so that you have the border, I think it'll look better. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to do that. And that's my favorite ones, Jean, when you and you guys do that. Uh, just have paper sitting everywhere because, so, like I said, most of these are still wet. So I did do this one. It looked pretty good until I put that last flower on top. About two steps too many on this bad boy. Hot mess. This was this partner. So, to me, that's a hot mess that I would never use. Um, and then where... Oh no, where's my teacup? Where's my teacup? We just did this one. Maybe she saw that. I lost the teacup. <laughs> I have no idea where the teacup went. It's probably stuck to something. That's bad news. See, it's either stuck to something or I already put it somewhere to dry for safety. And yeah, then it goes, you know how that goes. I'll keep it here, right here, safe. Safe right here, yeah. I lost it, I have no idea.
That's too bad because I painted over that image. That makes me mad. What did I do with it? Anyway, I have to show that one later again. This is its other pull, but I don't know where the original coffee cup is. That's a second pull where you can just barely see the coffee cup and other paint on the side. But it must be attached to something under something. I don't know. By now, it's probably stuck to something, but it's bothering me that I can't find it. Anyways, let it go. Doesn't matter. Still not dry. Does that have to dry completely? Like, absolutely completely. Well, then we were just playing. Like, so the, the open acrylic, this is still wet. All the open ones I've already printed are still wet, which is why the other mug one's worrying me because it's probably stuck to something else and then I'll never get it off again. We did this hot mess. This is really wet right now. You had it on top of all the originals, I know. Hmm. Originals meaning the ones that I... Oh my goodness. How is it possible? Okay, anyway. I'll say the same things over and over again. I, I think it's going to be stuck to something else. Because it wasn't anywhere near dry. But anyway. Does it have to be completely? Like, the, there's a little bit here, a little bit over here that's not dry. The ink is pretty much dry. Nobody uses a heat gun. This one I went too far on. Today I think I went too far on most of them, to be honest. <laughs> I'm not sure if any of them were a uh, success. Well, I, I mean, it's a, it's success how they are right now. I think I can add some good stuff to it. No, it's gone. No idea. I'm still waiting. I don't have a hair dryer. Well, I do. Not one in me. In here, though. Well, these old Fisker plates are good for something. Okay, so if I'm using white paper, and I have, right now I have purples on here. What kind of color do you want? The ink may never completely dry in the jelly plate, though. It's acrylic ink. It's, it, the, that's dry. The ink is dry. It's the, the acrylic ink is, I, I, I should continue to say acrylic ink. Uh, is dry. It's the other part that's not. So what color should I put? <laughs> Who's seen that? <laughs> Jeez, that's a tight and puff now. Because <laughs> uh, so I'm using white paper. Yeah, so I think that's what I'm saying. It probably needs to be like a yellow, a bright yellow paint, a yellow paint. I guess it can't hurt to try yellow, right? Contrast, big contrast. I tell you, I was, I was a great time watching Blade last night. I, I forgot how how much fun it is in his stream and and how uh, great of a guy he is. And you know, spending so much time with my nieces, like all these kid things I know again. So when he said, uh. Big summer blowout, I about died laughing. That's my favorite part of Frozen. Woohoo! Big summer blowout! <laughs> I got a big piece of goober on that bad boy. <laughs> Tight and puff, white and puff. It's getting out of hand. We're talking about tight and buff that's nowhere near enough paint tight tight and so t-i-t-a-n buff we're not we're not saying anything badly you know 
Just don't use Titan Buff and Flock at the same time. Just saying. Public service announcement for you. I kill myself, which is all that matters, right? Oh boy. Both of you can't go like a kid. <laughs> <clears throat> Okay, I don't have to wait now, right? Like I want to, I want to to do this quickly, right? Just just press, not quickly, but put the paper on quickly and then brayer the brayer it. All right, brayer. I think I have to brayer. Maybe I'll use my big. Where's my big? Tight. So sometimes in, in golden it's titan, oh yeah, titanium white or titan buff. Yeah. Gotta announce, enunciate, announcing, enunciate. I've gotta speak more clearly. Yeah. That's a really cool print. I think it looks like distressed paper, but that didn't work. But this one might, so I'm going to be quick. That means I put way too much paint, right, Jean? <clears throat> too much, yeah. I put too much paint. But I think it's because that's a cadmium yellow light hue, so I'm pretty sure that, that it's uh, more of a translucent color so I put way more on. Woohoo I like that. That's nice. Like that. I like that's what I like this grungy type look stuff but this is actually pretty cool just a plain print like that's a pretty for, I really like how this turned out because it's a solid even coat of yellow even coat of yellow but you know it has the little bit of a uh, little bit of stuff over there that's a good base it's so even but it's got some cool reminds me of like Oh, basic gray. If if you added a few more layers, I suppose. Well, at that, I definitely need to go and clean up. And I should take at least Simon to Subway for his for his uh, 